Hey there, my name is David, and in this video, we're gonna walk through this Avid Flyer Mark IV. It's a Stoll Bushplane kit that I bought. We'll first get everything organized, then we'll walk through what the kit came with, and if you stick to the end, we'll talk about what some of my plans are to build this thing. All right, we got everything hung up. Now let's talk about what came with this kit. The fuselage is brand new. This is the Mark IV fuselage. Comes with a cowling, a Rotax 912 engine mount. Comes with the seat cushion, which this is the lace-in style, so you can actually adjust kind of what the height is on all of this. This really wide bush gear, which puts the tires at 83 inches on center and 76 inches from plate to plate. The tires are Nanco 21s with Matco brakes. It seems like this fuselage was kind of later in the mix, it's got all this extra gusseting and whatnot on it. Overall, it's very clean. It's all brand new. The wings came with these three fuel tanks. One of them is a stole rib profile, and the other two are the speed wing profile. So these are fiberglass tanks. It looks like this one has been repaired just a little bit and subsequently was damaged again, it looks like here. And then on this front side over here, if you're interested in these tanks, let me know. I'm not planning on running the fiberglass tanks. I plan to either buy some aluminum tanks or I may fab up some tanks myself. So for the wings, it came with this brand new set of stole ribs. There are 13 ribs in each box, so 26 total. And it came with these already built speed wings with the extensions, which put the wingspan at 30 feet. So it came with a set of flaperons. Now the interesting thing on these flaperons is these first couple feet after the control doesn't have any flapper on. These are the asymmetrical flapper ons, but it looks like they go all the way to the outside edge of the wing. If you look at that speed wing extension, it's got that last, uh, that last bracket there. So I'm not totally sure on that one. If you know why they were built this way or what the advantage is, let me know. All right, let's talk about the wings on this. So they obviously came from a previous build. They look like they probably were flying if you look at some of the details here, it looks like there was uh, fabric on this at one point. It was painted yellow. So the wings, they, they look a little bit dirty. Um, you know, at first they were a little bit of concern, but as I went through this, you know, just a little bit of sandpaper kind of cleaned up some of those little spots on there. Um, and then as I inspected the bonding areas it looks like they were prepped so you can kind of see kind of the sanding marks there so it does look like it's got a, a nice bond to it and so overall it looks like they're in in decent shape they just need to clean up so these are your traditional speed wings they have 18 inch centers on the ribs and then the wall thickness is 065. and looking at this i realized that um, normally the fuel tank would be kind of in this first two bays here without that rib. So um, probably was an early Avid one or two without wing tanks, I'm guessing. If you know what that is, let me know. So I've spent the last 10 years doing CAD work on the side. I've been 3D printing, learning how to TIG weld, and my latest is cutting out parts on my CNC. So I can cut out panels, ribs, you name it. Which, P.S., if you need anything designed or cut out, or even just file prep to be able to send to a vendor, let me know the project details in the form below and I'd be happy to help you. Currently the build area on this is 24 inches by 20 inches. I plan to extend the Y axis on this so that I can get much longer lengths and cut out full ribs. So you can see I actually have three options or more on the ribs. I can build out the stole ribs, I could finish up the speed wing, or I could just go with a custom profile altogether uh, if there's an airfoil that you've tried out on the Kitfox or the Avid, let me know. I know the later Kitfoxes use a riblet profile. Bearhawk also uses a riblet profile. I was planning on scratch building one of those at some point, and so I've got plans for that one. Uh, and I've already digitized uh, what that profile looks like and kind of made an adaptation for what this could look like on an Avid or a Kitfox. I mean, after all, this is experimental aviation, right? We get the opportunity to make adjustments. Now, with that said, I want to do that responsibly. I definitely don't want to venture too far out of bounds. Definitely want to make sure it's a well-tested, well-thought-out, well-designed airfoil. 
So for those of you not aware, you can actually build an airplane, either your own plans from someone else's plans, or you can build from a kit. Lots of people actually build aircraft from home in the garage. And it's not just people bolting different ideas together and going out and flying. And it's actually a very safe way to fly still. There's a whole process for getting it inspected and having it flight tested and all of that. And so once you go through all the testing, you can actually get an airworthiness certificate in the experimental category. And there's some a little bit tighter restrictions on what you can and can't do with it. And so very safe way to fly. There's a massive community. Every year the EAA puts on an air venture uh, festival. It's the largest fly-in basically in the world. And um, last year, I think they had over 750,000 people attend. And so it's very big. So if it's something you're interested in, uh, definitely check it out. It's uh, definitely one of my passions. Uh, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, but um, something that I'm very interested in. Also have all these tail feather parts and lift struts. These are the seven eighths lift struts. And then it came with two sets of jury struts. Um, the yellow ones are the three quarter inch and then the red ones are this seven eighths. If you're interested in these three quarter inch jury struts, let me know. It also came with this fiberglass panel, a bare panel and the glare shield. And this whole pile of miscellaneous parts. Some things of interest are these spar stiffeners that came with it. So that's to stiffen up the 065 wall spars. And these are all the different uh, templates for the windshield and the floor panels and all the different parts. So uh, I'll probably digitize these. If you're interested in these, let me know. Just hit me up and I'd be happy to work with you on that. This is a brand new heater core. It's got, looks like two in, two out. And so that's going to be nice to have a complete instruction manual for assembly, a complete set of super avid NSI manuals. It also came with all these extra parts for the mixers and the control arms. If you know anything about these parts, let me know. As far as I understand it, this has kind of the latest and greatest um, mixer arms for the flapper ons and the, all the controls. So um, if you know anything about these, let me know. Also came with this upgraded tail wheel. This thing is much wider, <laughs> much bigger. I mean, for backcountry flying, you're definitely going to want to go with this or possibly even bigger. So if you have any thoughts on what I should do back here, let me know. And of course, a placard for when I finish this off. All right, now let's talk about what I want to do to this wall to bear fuselage. If you have ideas, let me know. But here are some of the ideas that I have. So first and foremost, this definitely needs some shocks. Uh, I think this is just rope holding it on, not even bungees. Definitely planning on doing the wide body mod, which basically instead of the door being right here, you extend out underneath this part right here and you basically extend the door out so it's about two inches wider here at the bottom. And then you kind of just streamline that all out so that the fuselage still is aerodynamic and does what it needs to do. And I also want to support this gear area a little bit more. I mean, this part of the gear is already very stout, but uh, this area is definitely needing some extra support. So I may go kind of the gusset route or I may put a support bracket there. If you've done this before, let me know. I've seen uh, the gusset route. I think Jim did that. I also plan to go with something more stout than this. I know these break often, and so I want to go with something that's got a shock absorber in it. I also plan to extend the tail surfaces a little bit, and I want to make them a balanced surface, so have kind of this piece come up and connect. I also plan on streamlining these so that they're a little more aerodynamic, like what's on the Speedster tail. All right, and then on the fuselage, uh, the previous owner, he already marked this out, kind of where you could cut it if you want to stretch the fuselage. I think I'll probably do it because I'm already here at a bare fuselage, and I've seen a really great way of doing that. If that's something you've done and you enjoyed that process and what the outcome was, let me know. I'm interested in either an 18 inch or 24 inch extension. Obviously, that will come down to weight and balance and kind of how this is meant to be set up. And so there's a lot of calculation to figure out and whatnot, but 
if that's something you've done, uh, let me know. I'm interested in learning more about it and deciding if it's the right thing or not. I'm also planning on doing a custom panel out of carbon fiber. I've got nothing against the traditional wall of gauges or the flat panels with glass in them, but I want to do something a little more contoured and modern. I want the panel to be simple and not too busy. I also want to keep everything that's needed close to your fingertips. So if you have a panel setup that you love, let me know. All right, if I've missed anything here, please let me know. I'm definitely not an expert and I have a lot to learn. Also, if you're interested in any of the parts, send me a message. I would gladly build and fly all of these parts. That's what my plan is. But if there's something that's interesting to you, send me a message and we'll work it out. I plan to be at Oshkosh this year. So if you're interested in that, send me a message and we'll meet up. All right, this is a good spot to end this one. So there's going to be a ton of build videos that come out on this. So please like this video, subscribe. And if you haven't already, like this video and subscribe. That's what I already said. And have a good afternoon. We'll see you later. <laughs>